Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make your hair go poof. We're gonna add volume, color, and style. This is gonna be a fun tutorial. Let's jump in. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And today's tutorial is super great. You can use this no matter what type of hair you have. We're gonna show you how to do a few things that are gonna make your hair just like, it's gonna stand out. So we're gonna start off by making the hair actually larger and we're gonna do this in the liquify tool dialog. And we've got some great tips to make sure that like, although you're gonna make the hair larger, you're not gonna mess up the background too much and it's still gonna look pretty natural. We're gonna show you how to make a freeze mask so you don't mess up the face as well. So really just the hair is gonna get bigger, super cool. Then we're gonna show you how to color the hair using one of my favorite tools. It's called a gradient map. It allows you to color your shadows, your mid-tones, and highlights separately. So we're adding some like nice reds into the shadows and some yellows into the highlights. Just really gives the hair a little bit more volume. Then we're gonna show you how to dodge and burn the hair. This is gonna make it look like it's got more depth. So the highlights are gonna be even brighter. The shadows are gonna be even darker. It's just gonna give the image a more three dimensional look. So no matter what your hairstyle is, this tutorial is sure to help. Well, you know the deal. Let's jump into Photoshop. All right, so jumping into Photoshop, we're gonna start by adding some volume to the hair of our subject. So let's duplicate our background layer and we're gonna use the liquify tool. So let's go to filter and down here to liquify. Okay, now the liquify tool basically just allows you to push and pull pixels in your photo. So we're gonna be making the hair just a little bit bigger in this case, but you got a couple things to keep in mind. One, you don't wanna affect your subject's face, right? You don't wanna like pull the face out, so that's important. We're gonna create a mask for that. And the second thing is you wanna make sure your background isn't being affected too much as well. And if you do push and pull the hair, it's gonna move the background too. Just make sure like if you have a, like a pole, like a light post and it's supposed to be like this and you do like this and liquify tool, it's gonna to look messed up, right? So just make sure you keep an eye out on the background when you do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a mask. So I'm gonna go here to my mask tool. It's the freeze mask tool. And we're just gonna paint this basically like right over our subject's face. This is this is going to keep your subject's face from moving. So we can use liquify, that's totally cool, but we don't wanna pull, you know, we don't want her eye to be like being pulled out or anything like that. Okay, so definitely wanna make sure we just freeze this area. It's not changing anything, it's just keeping it from getting affected. All right, there we go. So now that we've frozen that area, we're gonna grab our liquify tool here. And the key is to use a super large brush, right? Because if you use a small brush, okay, and you pull the hair out, like, yeah, that might look pretty cool. It's like, okay, looks good. The hair looks great. Wow, I'm so good at Photoshop. But then look at your background. You totally ruined that, right? So basically you use a large brush and it's gonna make sure that your background changes with the hair. It's gonna look a lot more natural. So let's go back to our brush here. We're gonna use a super large brush and I'm just gonna start here inside of the hair and start to pull outwards just a little bit. I'm not gonna go crazy with this, just a little bit. We're just adding some volume to the hair. We'll go up at the top a little bit more and kind of bring it out here on the right side a little bit more. And just remember, keep your background in mind. Like if I did this and move that column, then I wanna make sure I move the column on the top part of the image too. All right, and that looks really good. You know, we're not trying to do a huge change here, but just enough to make a difference. Now, if you're curious on what your change looks like, just pop this reconstruct tool here, okay? And then you can just do the before and the after, and you can actually stop anywhere along this line. Like, if you're like, oh, you know what? Let's just back it off a little bit. You can just hit there and hit okay, and that's gonna like apply basically right there. So your freeze mask again, that's just kept the face from moving. You can see that just the hair moved. So let's hit okay there. Looks really great. And you can see just the hair pops out. Obviously the background is gonna pop out a little bit. Okay, we know that's gonna be true. But as long as you use a large brush, it shouldn't be that noticeable. Again, you're just looking for like, am I looking at this and does it look like the background is popped out? And it doesn't, so we're good to go. So now we're gonna add some color to the hair. And to do this, we're gonna use one of my favorite tools. It's called the gradient map. So we're gonna start by using our marquee selection tool. I'm just gonna make a selection here of the hair. And then we're gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to gradient map. 
It's a super cool tool. We'll show you how to use it. Let's hit okay there. And because I made that selection, now this gradient map is only showing up right there, which is what I want for this exact case. We're gonna fill it in later to be the whole hair. For this, I just wanna see what's going on right there. Okay, now I'm gonna change our layer blend mode from normal down to overlay. Okay, you could use overlay, you can use soft light, either one you want. We're gonna use overlay in this case. And we're gonna click here on, in our properties window, you see your actual gradient. So let's go ahead and click there. Now, basically how this works is the gradient map colors your image based on the colors that are in this gradient. So your darks are on the left and your lights are on the right hand side. So in this case, it looks pretty weird, right? And that's because our lights are actually being colored with black, which doesn't make sense. So let's go ahead and click there. And here for our color, you know what? We're just gonna choose like a really nice, there we go. We're gonna go right up to like a nice bright yellow, something like that. Looks pretty good. All right, and we're gonna hit okay. So now we can see what's going on here in this little strip, what's actually being colored. And I wanna add some red into here. I think that'll be fun. So let's go ahead and click right about here, okay? And then I'm gonna go down and we're gonna start putting some red into our image. And you can just kind of like click around here and see like what looks good and you know what's working for you and what's not working for you. That looks pretty good there. Let's add a little bit more color into like the highlights. We're gonna go a little bit on the yellow side here, just a little bit brighter. I don't wanna go too saturated. You're gonna start to get something that doesn't really look, look that real. All right, and there we go. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Now keep in mind, you can change this at any time. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And you know what, maybe we'll just add a little bit more yellow color into just the highlights there. And you can also move these sliders around, which is gonna just give you slightly different results, okay? And this is a lot of the fun of like coloring hair. You just wanna make sure again that you're doing this on, you're taking your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights into account. All right, and let's put some deep reds in there, which looks pretty cool. So if you just add one color to hair, it's not really gonna look that realistic, but when you start doing this, it's gonna definitely look a bit more realistic. All right, there we go, that looks pretty good. So let's hit okay there. Now on our layer, we're, what we're gonna do is just fill this with black. Okay, let's hit shift delete to fill the layer mask with black, make it invisible. And then I'm just gonna hit B for the brush tool and we're just gonna paint this on our hair. So just using a soft edge brush here, we're just gonna paint this visible right over top of the hair. And the cool thing about this gradient map that I love is it's coloring the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights at the same time. So we just really have like a nice like change in the overall presence of the hair. All right, and keep in mind, this is an adjustment layer. Okay, so you can change these colors at any time. You just double click right here and change your gradients. Not only that, but you can change your opacity and your blending mode. There we go. So really, really cool way to just add a little bit more color. And then here around the face, you just wanna lower your flow of your brush down to like 10% or so, and just kind of paint that in just a little bit there. Okay, just to get a little bit of that color kind of like seeping in. Okay, looking pretty good. So let's just turn that off and on and really nice change there. Now, if you want it to be more subtle, not a problem. Just take your opacity and just lower your opacity a little bit. That's like totally a good way to go. And again, you can always go back in here. You can just double click here and go back to your gradient and you're like, oh, you know what? Right there, I want to add some green. So you can do something like this and then add some green in there, which kind of looks weird, but obviously you get the idea, right? You can go back in here and you can kind of change things at any point in time. So let's, let's go a little bit brighter with this. There we go. Adding a different hue and we can kind of play around. We can add all kinds of fun colors in here, but you get the idea. Whatever colors you choose here, those are gonna get reflected in your actual uh, image there. So let's hit okay. And there we go. So that's our hair change. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit more sheen to the hair and we're gonna do this with dodging and burning. So it sounds fancy, it's really pretty easy. Just, we're gonna make a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna make some of it brighter and some of it darker. And I'm gonna kind of follow some of these strands around the hair. It's just gonna give it a little more volume, a little bit more presence. So to start, we're gonna go to layer, down to new adjustment layer and over to curves. There we go. And we're just gonna click and drag this up. We're gonna go pretty far with this. 
And now I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert my layer mask. So we got a black layer mask there. Okay, now basically we just have our brush tool. We're gonna paint white on our brush with our brush here. And that's gonna reveal this curves adjustment layer. And you wanna use a low flow here again because you want this to kind of build up. But basically as I paint over top of these areas, wherever I decide that I wanna just add a little bit of highlight and call kind of a little bit of attention to, this is where I'm gonna just go over these areas. And the idea is just go over it, you know, a few times until it starts to really stand out. All right, so this little bit of hair right there, we're gonna have that stand out. And I'm kind of hitting the middle of each of these hair groups. And there we go. That looks good. And you can see in this case, we definitely have like traditionally, like what I would say is not like super messy, but a little bit on the messy side here, but this dodging and burning still really works to bring definition to the hair, which I really, really like. So let's just see there, just adding some light areas. And you know what, as I'm looking at the hair, I'm like, it looks good, but this yellow in the highlights, it's too much. So just go back here in your gradient map here, super easy, and we can just change how this looks. Okay, it's really easy. All we have to do is just change the saturation of these colors and look at that. We can just change this like incredibly quickly here. All right, there we go. We just wanna get something that's a little bit more realistic looking. All right, I did that. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna lower the opacity of this down just a little bit as well. Okay, so now that we've added some highlights to the hair, we're gonna do the same thing with shadows. So let's go to our layer down a new adjustment layer and over to curves. And we're just gonna pop this down just a bit, invert our layer mask, and now I'm just gonna add some dark areas. And this is just gonna be anywhere we don't want to draw attention to. And dodging and burning really works in the contrast between your lights and your darks. So if you just lighten things or just darken things, it's not really gonna help out. You wanna darken some areas and lighten some other areas, and that's gonna really help those uh, those contrasts like show up and kind of draw more attention to certain areas. Great, so there we go. We just darkened some of those areas. So we have our lighten group and we have our darken group. Let's just make those both invisible and visible again. You can see just adds that. And these, you know, I tend to overdo things a little bit. I know that, so I'm like, okay, let's lower the opacity though. It's just a little bit. All right, guys, well, we're basically done. I'm just gonna lower the opacity of my gradient map layer just a little bit so we have a little bit more natural hair. And let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. Here's the before and the after. So that's all there is to it. Doesn't our hair look fabulous now? <laughs> It really does. My favorite part is probably that gradient map. I just love what it does. You can color so many cool things using a gradient map. So if you've never used that tool, be sure to give it a whirl. It's a really, really great thing to have in your tool bag. Uh, speaking of tool bag, that was my nickname in high school. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Hey, tool bag. <laughs> Get over here. Why does everyone call me tool bag? Maybe it's because I'm so useful. I have all the tools that they need. Yeah, that's it for sure.